Sean. Uh, wanted to talk to you about rep and warranty insurance. It's a really hot tool in the MA space today. And because you're one of the experts in the Canadian market, uh, wanted to get a sense of what you're currently seeing in the market for its use. But first, wanted to talk about its current growth. It seems like six, seven years ago, nobody was talking about this sure. product. Now it's on everybody's radar screen. What is the product penetration value which you're currently seeing this, this tool? Yeah, um, my business partner John Antonecki likes to say it was a solution looking for a problem that you know five six years ago. Um, so it's really taken off in Canada if we look back the last three five years for sure. You're almost seeing a doubling of the policy count in Canada, 2016 to 17 to 18, and there's there's no slowing up um, right now. One of the things I've also seen being part of an international firm is is that. The penetration values is different from Canada uh, relative to the rest of the world. Yeah. I know it, that this product has been around much longer in those parts of the world, and in some areas, uh, in the UK and Australia, the penetration levels could be as high as 60-70%. Where do you see that going in Canada, and are we going to get to those levels? Yeah, it's uh, it, it's much more of an integral part of the M&A process in some of those jurisdictions you just mentioned. Uh, we look at Europe, the UK and Germany, for example, uh, W&I or warranty and indemnity insurance, kind of the equivalent of reps and warranty insurance. Um, it's probably used in, in some of those countries 60% of the time. Uh, in the US, which is a little ahead of us on the usage of this product, uh, you're probably looking at about 50% uh, some of the sources that I've read from online. Um, and, and driving that is private equity, but, mm -hmm. but, but also you know, a big user's corporate strategic the last couple of years which has driven that number up. So in the Canadian context, um, it depends who you talk to. Someone that might have a practice that's really geared towards private equity, that number right now they're probably saying it's contemplated almost every time and it's probably used and bound 30% of the time, kind of getting around that number. Um, but when you look at the totality of Canadian deals and some of the data that we've scrubbed, um, and, and more of an addressable market, um, smaller deals, and, and, and you maybe extract uh, publicly traded companies, public public style deals, um, extractive resources. We're seeing about 16 to 18 percent penetration. So we think there's great growth, great runway, but there's also been good adoption the last couple of years. So it's it's growing, and, and we see it. Um, I can't tell you for sure if it's going to get to those levels we've seen internationally, mm -hmm. but it is increasingly being used by people. It's the kind of comment that we hear from our clients. Once we use it once, there's no going back. This facilitated the acquisition much smoother than it had in the past. You know, looking at it from a legal perspective, it reminds me a lot of, of title insurance. Mm -hmm. you know, 20 years ago, whenever you did any type of real estate transaction, you would always use a legal opinion. And once title insurance came around, people were a little bit hesitant to use it. But once they realized how easy it was to implement the whole deal process, people came to imagine going back to the longer, more antiquated approach. And just on that, just a quick one. Um, you hear that sometimes. I've had a, a, a recent discussion with an insurer that, yes, the proliferation of this product is up, but because it's every deal, M&A deal is so bespoke, as you would know, where real estate transactions, I think, can be much more standardized. That's why we might we might not get to the point where we are in title insurance, but we definitely have a ton of runway for growth, and uh, and the penetration levels I think will follow. With the the growth of this product, what are the variables, or what are the reasons you're seeing, other than the fact that it just makes sense for a lot of these transactions? But why do you see that it's growing at the rate it currently is in Canada? What are what's causing it? Yeah, I, I think it's it's familiarity with the product. It's, hey, I was in a bid and uh, I think I lost because I didn't have this. Or, um, you know, I think I would have been in a much better position if I used this. Or, um, you know, I really wish I did because of the financial loss that I incurred. So I think it's, it's, it's getting the awareness out, uh, people becoming more familiar with that. And you've got demand and supply drivers there. There's more insurance carriers coming in, whether directly using their own balance sheet or going through the underwriting expertise of a managing general, a man, managing general agent. Um, so they'd be backing them in a syndicate. Um, so you've got more people getting comfortable um, underwriting this risk and transferring the misallocation and risk between a buyer and seller in an M&A deal 
to an insurance company. They're, they're willing to do these deals. But you've got um, an addressable market on the demand side opening up. It's not just bulge bracket private equities. It's smaller private equity shops. It's institutional investors, pension plans, which might have um, self-insured in the past. Search funds, which is really big in, in the Toronto, Canada context. Um, family offices looking to use this as a corporate governance tool. And, 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 and if I missed it, the corporate strategics are a huge, huge user, user of this, especially the serial acquirers. I think you're, uh, you're bang on when you're talking with the fact that it's, it's really people getting educated in the product. I remember when the first couple of deals uh, were coming across my desk and a lot of people don't want to be the first to try their product because they don't know how it's going to work out and as they look around and see more and more of their, their competitors or their associates uh, that are having some great success and they're realizing that it's not going to impede the process of the M&A transaction in any, in any uh, conversely, it's going to make things much more smoother. People are much more likely to jump into the market going forward, so I completely agree with you.